We now return to CNN and Fortune with Will Obey. Tonight, we'll meet a woman who had no problems gaining respect in her workplace. As a pioneer in the world of video games, she helped Sony set new records and make billions of dollars. She's wielding a whole lot of power and helping to shape an industry. Tonight, Peggy Knapp takes us into the lair of Lara Croft. What's your idea of the perfect woman? Would she have the beauty of a supermodel? The stamina of an athlete? The talent of a pop star? Or perhaps... Just a set of big guns. For millions of video gamers, there is no contest. Laura Croft is it. Of course, this isn't the real Laura Croft. This is just an actress who plays the graphic. This is the real Laura, the oozy-toting, anatomically overcorrected digital star of the blockbuster video games Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2. Video game enthusiasts have gathered here at the industry's mecca, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, to catch a glimpse of their favorite pinup girl. She's a digital creature. She's perfect. The most beautiful girl in video games today. It's only in the last four years that computers have become powerful enough to generate characters like Laura and her three-dimensional world. Laura dives down waterfalls fends off ferocious predators with world-class weaponry, and performs all sorts of acrobatics in her hunt for ancient artifacts. Action like this has helped turn video gaming into the fastest growing segment of the entertainment business. It's only been a 25-year-old industry, and yet there are $10 billion of global revenues now in software, $17 billion if you include hardware. Ian Livingstone is chairman of IDOS Interactive, owners of the Tomb Raider franchise. Together, Tomb Raider 1 and 2 have sold around 6 million copies. If you take an average retail price, uh, what the consumer will pay, say it's $40, and uh, 6 million copies sold, that's $240 million. That equates easily to a box office success of a movie. That's the kind of green that gets a girl on magazine covers, her own action figure, even a gig with U2. The buzz surrounding Laura reaches all the way to Wall Street. I think they've created something that is the embodiment of what a 20-year-old wants to surround himself with. VCW really didn't do very good. Analyst Sean McGowan follows interactive entertainment. As long as Lara doesn't get drunk and smash up her car, which can't happen with cyber characters, they've got a really val valuable franchise. You know, she's not going to pull a Spice Girl and quit the group. So I'm going to stay here a while longer. Long enough to star in her own movie, due out next year. But perhaps Laura's most impressive role is what she and a handful of other software titles have done for sales of video game systems, the hardware needed to play the games. Laura's system of choice is this, Sony PlayStation. We started the PlayStation in 1995 in September. Kaz Hirai is Chief Operating Officer of Sony Computer Entertainment America. How important is the gaming business to Sony now? How much a part of the bottom line does this Well, I think, uh, you know, if you look at any of the uh, numbers that you've seen, um, you know, the, uh, the PlayStation business or the game business segment, if you will, has become a very substantial portion of the overall Sony, uh, Sony numbers. To get an idea of how big Lara Croft and Sony PlayStation are, consider this. Three years ago, Sony's game business generated zero dollars in revenue. Today, it's a nearly five and a half billion dollar business. Sales for Sony's game business, hardware and software, jumped 72% last year, making the unit more profitable than Sony Music and Sony Pictures combined. Before Sony blasted its way into living rooms, gaming was dominated by old guard video game titans, Sega and Nintendo. Remember Mario? 
Then PlayStation hit with an arsenal of blockbuster titles like IDOS's Tomb Raider and Sony's Crash Bandicoot and Final Fantasy VII. The hardware purchase is almost really directly related to the software purchase. And you see it also on the Sony PlayStation where a game like uh, Tomb Raider or a sports game from Electronic Arts once that's released, the hardware sales will spike up because people who've been holding back say, all right, now that's a game I have to have, and I have to buy the hardware in order to play that game. Ronaldo scores! Yes, that Nice one. Sony now controls 62% of the American console market, with a PlayStation in one out of every 10 U.S. homes. The nearest competitor, Nintendo, controls about 37%. How did you compete with Nintendo and Sega when they were so big? Right. Um, you know, I think it's a combination of uh, several things. One is uh, the fact that we use the CD-ROM as our medium to deliver the games instead of uh, other formats such as cartridges. A CD game costs about $10 to make, while cartridges for Nintendo 64, PlayStation's nearest rival, cost about $20. Cheaper production costs translate into lower prices for not only consumers, but game developers, meaning they can produce more titles. From Parappa the Rapper. When I say boom, 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 you say bam, bam, bam. No pause in between. Come on, let's check. To NFL games. The diversity of titles is no accident. Before PlayStation, games were mostly aimed at teenage boys. Then Sony made the strategic decision to go after gamers that its competitors were all but ignoring. Up fly to shallow right. Adults with leisure dollars to spare. Great diving cat. Mike, a 26-year-old physical therapist, and his friends have spent months with Laura Croft. I mean, literally, you'll sit there and you'll, you'll go, okay, it's 2 in the morning, i got to work 30 more minutes. <laughs> and then 30 minutes goes like that, and you're like, oh, all right, I, I can still get four hours of sleep. Gamers like Mike have proven a gold mine for Sony. PlayStation is most popular with adults aged 24 to 34. Still, if Sony has its way, PlayStation will drive its way into even more living rooms. Sony believes this can be a higher than 35 to 40 percent of the U.S. homes. We can get to 50 or 60 percent of U.S. homes. That, that remains to be seen. It's never happened before, but it's Sony's belief that the market can be bigger than ever before because of that breadth of, of popularity, in which case we're not even near the peak. Which is good news for Laura Croft. The third in the series, Tomb Raider 3, is due out just in time for Christmas.